or a life ministries come out of the world. Messiah people seek the truth. Who was Melchizedek? Who was Melchizedek? So that's the question that's being asked. Now, again, if you're new to the Bible or even if you read it a long time, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I was a believer many, many years and read the Bible several times before I even questioned who Melchizedek was. Until I kept hearing teachers talking about Melchizedek, Melchizedek, Melchizedek blessing, Melchizedek priesthood, and so on. Then I, I got to find out about who this Melchizedek is. Uh, but uh, so uh, remember, this is the standard Christian Bible, the New Living Testament. Then I'm going to get into the Hebraic roots. It clearly defines more about the Melchizedek. So it says, who was Melchizedek? He was obviously a God-fearing man, for his name means king of righteousness. And king of Salem means king of peace. He was a priest of God Most High. And then a reference here, Hebrews 7, 1 and 2. He recognized God as creator of heaven and earth. What else is known about him? Question mark. And then it says, four main theories have been suggested. And now it gives, they call it theories. Four main theories have been suggested. So one of them says, the first one says, Melchizedek was a respected king of that region. Abraham was simply showing him the respect he deserved. So that was one theory. Another theory is the name Melchizedek may have been a standing title for all the kings of Salem. That was the second one, okay? The third one was Melchizedek was a type of Yeshua. And then it references Hebrews 7.3. A type is an Old Testament event or teaching that is so closely related to what Yeshua did that it illustrates a lesson about Yeshua. All right, that was three. And then the fourth theory is Melchizedek was the appearance on earth of the pre incarnate Yeshua in a temporary body form. So that's what it says there. Hallelujah. Uh, that's what it says there. And I believe Yeshua in a human form showed up several times in the original covenant. And there are scriptures to show uh, to show these uh, these occasions and, and these events. Uh, but those are the four theories of people believe. Now I'm going to get into, I'm going to, we're going to actually look at Hebrews. I'm going to actually, uh, we're going to read it actually. But first we're going to uh, look at here a little bit more uh, about Melchizedek. It says, uh, Melchizedek's story is told in Genesis 14, 17, 20. He's also mentioned in Psalms 110, uh, 4, and Hebrews 5 to, and 7 to 7. Uh, and it gets into Melchizedek. So, well, let's just read it here. It says, do you like a good mystery? History is full of them. Uh, they usually, uh, involve people. One uh, of the most mysterious people in the Bible is the king of peace. Melchizedek, he appeared one day in the life of Abram, Ab Abram and was never heard from again. What happened that day, however, was to be remembered throughout history and eventually became a subject of the New Testament letter, Hebrews. This meeting between Abram and Melchizedek was most unusual. Although the two men were strangers and foreigners to each other, they shared the most important characteristic. Both worshiped and served the only God who made heaven and earth. So, uh, so... That that's uh, we're going to continue to read this description of him, uh, and and it's important. This is important. Now, first of all, we don't know who Melchizedek was, right? They say, but how and who told him about the Creator that he served of heaven and earth, and 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 so on. So it was somewhat of a mystery, but it's cleared up clearly when you read Hebrews. But it says this was a great moment of truth for Abram. He had just defeated an army and regained the freedom of a large group of captives. If there was any doubt uh, in his mind about whose victory it was, Melchizedek set the record straight by, re or by uh, reminding Abram, and blessed be God the Most High who has defeated your enemies for you. And Abram recognized that this man worshipped the same God he did. Melchizedek was one of a small group of God-honoring people throughout the Old Testament who came in contact with 
uh, the Israelites, but were not uh, Jewish themselves. This indicates that the requirement to be a follower of God is not uh, genetic, uh, genetic, but uh, is based on faithfully obeying his teachings and recognizing his greatness. Hallelujah. Uh, do you let uh, God speak to you through other people? Uh, evaluate others. Do you consider God's impact on their lives? Are you aware of the similarities between yourself and others who worship God? Even in their form of worship is uh, quite different from yours. Do you know uh, the God of the Bible well enough to know uh, if you truly uh, worship him? Al allow Melchizedek, Abraham, David, Yeshua, along with many other uh, persons in the Bible to show you these, uh, this great God, creator of heaven and earth. He wants you to know how much he loves you, and he wants you to know him personally. And then it talks about the strengths and accomplishments of this Melchizedek. And it says here, uh, the first a priest king of scripture, a leader with a heart turned to God, good at encouraging others to serve God wholeheartedly, a man whose character reflected his love for God, a person in the Old Testament who reminds us of Yeshua and who some believe really was Yeshua. Uh, and then it says, lessons in his life. Uh, live for God and you're likely to be the right in the right place at the right time. Examine your heart to whom or what is your greatest loyalty. If you can honestly answer God, you are living for him. Uh, vital statistics, where he ruled in, in Salem, site of the future Jerusalem, occupation, king of Salem and priest of God, the most high. And then, uh, so that's what it says here about it. Now, when it said here, some believe he is actually God in the flesh. We're going to look at and read uh, the Renewed Covenant. We're going to read Hebrews. And we're actually going to see what it says here about Melchizedek. And, and we're going to cover this now. And, and then and, and we're going to really, really get into it because it's, it's, it's very, very important that we look at that. And if you're just joining us, we're reading chapter 14 of Genesis, talking about Melchizedek. And, and 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 about it. So I'm just going to look here quickly for another reference here on this before we read what the what the Hebraic Roots Bible has to say uh, about this uh, particular event and exactly what what happened here. So let me check uh, one more note. This is so significant that we get a good clear understanding of this because if we truly want to understand later on the renewed covenant and just the whole idea of the word covenant. Uh, it's really important to understand uh, what we're getting to here when we when we when we look at Melchizedek because this is serious, you know. Because when this Bible says, uh, or or the, the translation that I just read says, there's four theories. No, listen, Yeshua is not a theory. Yeshua is is, is Yahweh. Hallelujah. So so we can't mix that. That this is serious. We can't just skip over that and suggest that he's one of four theories. We have to understand, you know, who he is. And he did appear, uh, clearly appeared in the human form in the original covenant uh, several times. This, in my opinion, being the first one. Uh, but uh, as as we, uh, well, maybe even the second one, but, uh, but definitely uh, he appeared. So let's cover this here now and see this. Okay, so in the, in the, Hebraic Roots Bible, it says, Melchizedek is a title for Yeshua Messiah, who is the king of peace and king of Jerusalem. And it references Hebrews 7, 1 and 2. The most high El in Hebrew is El Elyon. And then uh, and then verse 2, I mean, in second note here says, Abraham tied it to Melchizedek, knowing that he was Yeshua. And it references Hebrews 7, 1 to 10. So, so even though the one who Bible brought out that it wasn't clear who tithed it to who, it says here clearly, Abraham uh, tithed it to Melchizedek, knowing that he was Yeshua. And this Hebraic Roots Bible can be gotten at www.cohwh if you're, if you're looking in. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to read Hebrews 7, 1 to 10 right now. Remember, this is the first time uh, this, this is uh, coming up, this topic. and most. Christians will skip over this. They won't even, if they're even reading the original covenant, they won't really show any significance to this. Um, but most people in Hebraic roots really 
uh, study this out and look into this. And I believe most people in the Hebraic roots or followers of scripture uh, are under the assumption uh, of the fact that, you know, he, Melchizedek is Yeshua. So uh, so let's look over in Hebrews 7, 1 to 10 and actually see what it says. And we'll cover Hebrews later when we do the Renewed Covenant because we're reading the scriptures live every single day. Live every single day. If you've missed it from the beginning, you could still catch up to us. We're up to now the 14th chapter, but we've already done the first 13. You can just go back and see them. Excellent, excellent uh, stuff we covered. And just join me every day live. And uh, if you're on YouTube, just get that notification going so you get a notification when I'm on. There's not a particular time I'm on every day. Every day I get on as soon as I can. But I'm on air, uh, every day, y'all willing. So, uh, so where we were turning, we're turning to Hebrews 7. 1 to 10, Hebrews 7, 1 to 10. So it says, and, and remember, Hebrews is also known as the book of uh, the Messianic Jewish people. Uh, so it's, 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 it's that, that's what it's also known as. So it says in chapter 7, and remember, Paul, Paul was a Hebrew scholar. Paul knew Torah by heart. And it's mentioned here, it says, for this Melchizedek, and it says, no, Melchizedek is a title and an order, but not a personal name. King of Salem, priest of the Most High Elohim, the one meeting Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessing him. So, so he met Abraham, he blessed Abraham. It says in verse 2, to whom also Abraham divided a tenth from all, first being interpreted king of righteousness, and then also king of Salam, which is the king of peace. And the note here says, only Yeshua holds these titles and is clearly Melchizedek. And then it, it references, if you want to look it up yourself, Genesis 14, 17, 20, which we just read, but also Jeremiah 23, 5, and 6. So if you want to write that note down and look that up later, Jeremiah uh, 23, 5, and 6. So verse 3 says, uh, without father, without mother, without genealogy, nor beginning of days, nor having an end of life, but like the son of Elohim, his priesthood remains forever. The verse here says, we see this eternal priesthood even in the Garden of Eden, as when, Adam's, uh, when Adam sinned, Yeshua had to sacrifice the first animal, showing that sin sheds innocent blood. In Genesis 3.21. The word like here means uh, the same. Paul is revealing Yeshua as Melchizedek. And then verse 4. Now behold, how great is this one uh, to whom even the, the patri patriarch Abra Abraham, Abraham, or Abraham uh, gave tithes and paid heed, uh, heed tax. Uh, now, so, so remember, this is a... Uh, uh, significant because this covers so much uh, with tithing and so much information, and we'll continue to get more into these. So, verse five: For they of the sons, uh, they of the sons of Levi who received the priesthood were authorized by the Torah that they should take tithes from the people, even from their own brethren who also came out of the loins of Abraham. And the note here says. Tithing was instituted way before the covenant at Mount Sinai and the Levitical priesthood. Uh, but Yahweh sh uh, shared his tithe with Levi during the priesthood of the temple sacrifices. And let's see, we're going to continue here. Verse 6. But this man who was not recorded in their genealogies took tithes from Abraham and blessed him who have received the promise. But it is beyond controversy, controversy that the inferior is blessed uh, to his superior, uh, is blessed by his superior. And verse four, the note says, showing the far superiority that Yeshua uh, as Melchizedek has to Abraham, a human. And then verse seven, uh, no, verse eight. And here men, uh, men, who died received the tithes, uh, but there, uh, but but there, he of whom the scriptures testifies that he lives receives them. Verse five, uh, 
Uh, quoting from Psalms 110.4, showing that Melchizedek is an eternal title and an uh, eternal being. And then finally, verse 9, and through Abraham, as one may uh, say, even Levi who, re Levi, who receives tithes, was himself tithed. Uh, for he was yet in his father's loins when Melchizedek met him. Uh, so, so there we go. So that that covers what we were talking about here, in in, in the note that it referenced when it says Hebrews seven one to ten, and we'll get into Hebrews again uh, in the future after we cover these books of Leviticus and we get through all the books. And we'll get up there. We'll have a much clearer understanding. I've already done some books of the Renewed Covenant in my daily Bible readings, but I purposely didn't do the book of Hebrews because I wanted to go through uh, the original covenant first before I did. So give us a better understanding of that. So, uh, so there you go. Out of the world, oh my people, seek the truth, avoid the evil, learn Yahweh's ways, Torah life ministries, come out of the world. Oh.